And we're live, buddy. Chris Ridgeway, thanks for coming, dude. Thanks for having me. I think you're guest number seven on the McKenzie podcast. Yeah, I was hoping for that 007 number, but you took it last week. By I know, yourself. I had to take that for myself, man. Yeah. But it's all good. <clears throat> now, I appreciate you um, uh, reaching out after my last post and saying you wanted to do it. Um, kind of, you think it'd be easier to get people on here, but people really don't put themselves out there like that and want to want to commit to being, you know, in a room in here for an hour and then put it on the internet. So, yeah, I figured you're not that bad of a dude, and I could yeah. use the advertisement. So, let's do it. The way I try to sell it too, man. If it doesn't go well, we'll just delete it, and not put it on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to. It's not like it's a live stream. You know. Um. Well, cool, man. So, Chris Ridgeway. Crownstone, your home improvement and remodeling company. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Crownstone. <clears throat> yeah, so Crownstone started uh, about three years ago now. Um, I had a long history in commercial construction and started doing a bunch of side work, doing decks and patios and redoing people's kitchens and bathrooms and everything like that. And <clears throat> all these people were calling me, come to their house and I'm like, look, it's six weeks before I get there, eight weeks before I get there. I have a day job. And people just kept waiting. And one day I was, like, asking all my customers, why are you guys waiting for me? There's 15 guys whose signs are on the road every weekend. Why don't you call any of them? And kept getting the same response of they don't show up, they don't do good work, their price is crazy, they don't call me back. All the same kind of excuses. And I was like, well, there must be an opportunity here. So, uh yeah, started the company, you know, kind of more full-time back then, but kept my day job um, up until end of October this last year and quit and started doing it full-time. And, um, yeah, I haven't looked back since. So. so you've been doing this as a side gig for since 2018, right? So Pretty for much. the last three or four years. Yeah. And uh, just in the last three or four months, you've made it full-time. Yep. Yeah, so, so yeah, I was uh, born and raised in Calvert and uh, worked for Frank Cleary Custom Builders building houses. And I know did, Frank. I cut, yeah. I cut trees for Frank. Yeah, you and Frank go back. Um, yeah, he's a he's an old school dude, man. Yeah, good people, good yeah. people. Um, so, yeah, worked for them and then got in, uh, went and got my civil engineering degree and <clears throat> went into big construction and ended up working for companies like Under Armour and built Under Armour stores all over the United States, which was pretty cool. And, um, yeah, just got tired of the corporate world and just couldn't take it anymore. And um, had some medical stuff kind of check me a little bit. And it was like, you know, what what's worth it in life? What, you know, what makes you happy? And going to driving 45 minutes into D.C. every day, fighting, fighting the racetrack, that's Route 4, <clears throat> right. wasn't worth it. And, you know, I decided let's do it full time. So, Actually, Frank's grandson and I partnered in Crownstone, um, so we're working together. And uh, Frank's son, Steve, that I, I first worked for back in high school, he's working for us now. So kind of came full circle. Um, but, yeah, just got tired of the corporate world, man. Had to give it yeah. a go. So you left uh, a decent job. Yeah, I was a so – like you, were, you were like in supervision or management and – yeah, I was a project manager for a big concrete company in D.C., biggest concrete company in the country. Um, oh. Just because just you're the biggest doesn't mean you're the best. Everybody needs to remember that. Um, and uh, It's a little jab there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super uh, super corporate company. A lot of stuff they did well, but a lot of stuff that they, they didn't do well. Um, right. And I feel like the bigger you get, man, the less like personable you get with employees and even customers and shit like that, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, once I feel like I'm a number and I'm no longer Chris, I got a problem. And, you know, I'm I'm big, I'm loud, I like my voice to be heard. You don't always have to listen to me, but I like you to hear me out. Right. Um, and it kind of got to the point where we were, we were butting heads on that. And, um, you know, like I was telling you a little while ago, I am making $130,000 a year, gas card, vacation, 401k matching, all that stuff. And, you know, I know there's a lot of guys out there listening right now like, dude, that dude's made it. And it, I mean. Wasn't for you. Wasn't for me. And, right. you know, it's. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, most people would consider that fucking very successful, dude. 
Yeah, you I know, mean, for, they, that's the type of job where you just kind of stick it out and grind it out until you can fucking retire, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I thir- just turned 33 years old. Right. Um, and, yeah, to be 33 years old, making over $100,000 a year, most guys would say, yeah, you've done it. But I, I read a couple quotes on Instagram said, uh, a salary is what they pay you to forget your dreams. And it's true. You know, like, it's there's a lot of guys out there that are a lot smarter than me probably could make a lot more money than me, but it, it's a big step to take. And, oh, yeah. Um, it's a risk, man, no doubt. Big risk. I mean, I got a mortgage. I got two car payments. I got, you know. So you <laughs> so you have, like, a grown-up responsibilities, man. So to walk away from a salary like that and to go at it full-time in the last three or four months, that's a pretty neat perspective, you know. Um, so have you had, like, a oh shit type moment yet or, like? Um, yeah, I mean, what, but – Getting up to leaving, I was like, okay, these are my monthly bills. I need to have X number of dollars in savings. Um, recently had some unforeseen stuff on the house. Had to replace a septic system and all new drain fields and stuff like that. And it's one of those things where you're like, well, there's a cool 15 grand I wasn't counting for. But, you know, luckily had family help me out a little bit on some stuff like that. But, yeah, there's some times where you're just like, damn, like you just see that bank account going down and down and down because – you know, we're buying kitchen cabinets for the jobs or we're buying tile ahead of the jobs. And, yeah. you know, through the holidays, things get delayed. So jobs are pushing back, but I'm already out the money on the materials and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And it, it takes a while to get the money back in. And I, I think that's what a lot of people don't realize is as contractors, they're, you know, if we're out the money for less than 90 days, then we're doing pretty good, you know, like. Yeah, it's hard, man. Right. So I do, um, same. it's the same issues that I put up with, but, you know, it's like, like, right now, the snow we just got, I was halfway through rebuilding a bioretention pond. It's wide open. I got, like, six, seven days of work into it. Bought, like, probably 15, 20, probably between 15 and 20 grand worth of material that's on the job. And I'm dead in the water, man. I can't do anything there. It's just sitting. Yep. You know, I got all that money tied up on the job, and we can't finish it. Probably got two or three days left. Not to mention, with all this the snow melting and everything, you're yeah. going to have damage from it that right. you're kind of eating. Yep, it's hard, man. Yeah. So I think that's something that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize contractors put up with, like, that cash flow problem a lot. Yeah. You know? so it's just something you got to account for. you got to have money. As fast as money comes in, man, it goes out. Yeah. So there's no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool, man. So, I mean, it's a, you, it's a cool, fresh perspective of somebody just making that leap of faith so recently. Um, I guess overall, you happy with the decision? I've honestly never been happier. Um, right. Good. You know, it's it's one of those things where I've been talking about doing it for years. You know, all my buddies are like, dude, why don't you go out on your own? Why don't you go out on your own? And you get comfortable with that, that paycheck. Yeah. Um, you get comfortable and just kind of in your spot. Um, and <clears throat> honestly, a good mentor of mine that he owns his own dump truck business down here in the county, um, does mechanic work and everything too. And he told me, he's like, every day you go to work and you have more faith in that other guy that owns your company to write you a check. He's going to make enough money that day to write you a check, but you don't have enough faith in yourself to make enough money to write yourself a check. And it was kind of like, that kind of, that hit me. And it was like, you know, I I got enough faith in myself, I'm going to make it. And like I was telling you before, you know, my girlfriend was asking me, how do you know how much money you need to make? And right now I know what my bills are every month. Divide that by 30 days. I know every day I have to make X amount of dollars. Anything more than that, I'm killing it. Anything less than that, well, we better work harder tomorrow. And, you know, just trying to trying to keep the work out there and keep the work coming in front of the guys. And, you know, I I left my day job, and all my buddies there were like, dude, you get to go work with your tools again. You know, that's awesome. I, I can't tell you the last day I put my tool belt on in the last four months um, just because, right. you know, you're going to meet with customers. You're going to look at kitchens. You're going to pick up tile samples. So tell know. me, yeah, that's, that's, so let me, tell me a little bit about what your day-to-day consists of then. Like yeah, I mean, being like, uh, being like fresh into it with employees and, you know, it's your full-time gig now. You working four days a week, six days a week? Uh, we're, we're, yeah, I'd say five and then Saturday I'm usually doing office stuff. Um, so six days. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, there's f- five of us total in the company right now. Um, so I got really good Kyle, uh, Cleary's really good carpenter and can kind of handle everything in the field, but I got to get it all there for him to do his work. I got to make sure the plumber's there. I got to make sure the electrician's there. 
I got to make sure the tile guy is going to be there. He's got the right materials that the customer picked that right tile that, you know, all that. So luckily working for all these big companies kind of helped me with organization and scheduling and all that. So, um, you know, we, the, one of the first things I did was set up a box account for the whole company and every last name has a folder in there. So the McKenzie house would have a folder in there. <clears throat> if you go in there, if we work on your bathroom, we work on your kitchen, we work on your patio, whatever it is, the materials we use, the price, that man hours I figured for the job, all that's in there. So at any point, the guys in the field can see, hey, is this cabinet layout right? Is this tile right? You know, what are my hours on the job to do this task? Like, are we going to make money? So it's not, it, it saves all the phone calls. And you know how it is running a small business. There's always somebody that wants you, whether it's a customer, whether it's, Oh yeah, a guy. Whether it's the accountant, the lawyer, somebody's always trying to get a hold of you. So, the more time you can stay focused on what you're doing, it, it helps the whole company in the process. And you know, just organizing all that stuff. You're not getting a phone call every ten minutes of, "Hey, is this cabinet in the right spot?" Like, dude, look at the drawings. Like, that's why they're there. And just keeps you focused on what you're doing. Yeah, that's cool that everybody has access to that. Yeah, I mean, with I, the iPads and the iPhones and everything like that, it's so easy now. Um, yeah. You know, and they, they can even take pictures daily and put them in, like, a, a job photos folder in there so we can track our progress and then share them with the customer at the end, too. So, you know, they know where the pipes are on the wall and, and stuff like that. Um, right. Just, you know, trying to use technology the best we can. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I know it's hard. Like, I, I try to use it to my advantage as much as I can. It's hard sometimes, though, with, like, guys in the field wanting to use – the technology, because a lot of times they feel like it just slows them down more than anything. Um, and then, like, the older generation, like, you're not going to get Frank to look at drawings <laughs> on fucking an iPad, dude. No. <laughs> like, that ain't happening. No. <laughs> like, so, Doesn't know what an iPad is. No. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's kind of like a, a generational gap there, too. But, I mean, I think it's great. You know, I think it is a tool that needs to be utilized. I mean, shit, we're already paying for it. Everybody's got a computer in their pocket all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's it's cool, one man. of those things where you gotta you gotta prove the value to people. You know, people don't <clears throat> yeah. believe stuff until they have a reason to believe it. And you know, once you show the guy, you like you're out walking with a customer, you can't an- drop what you're doing and say, "Hey, stand here in the mud for a minute while I answer this call from one of my guys." So they're waiting for you. Once you prove to them, "Hey, you lost ten minutes just because you're waiting for me to call back." If you just went on the app and pulled up the folder, you would know exactly what we were doing. Right. <clears throat> so. Yeah, once you get buying, then you're good. But you got to stay on top of it too. You got to make sure the right stuff's there because once you let them down with the wrong yeah. stuff, then they're like, "Hey, I looked and it's not there, dude." Yeah, you know, the, the whole system's out. <laughs> yeah, um, that's funny, man. Um, so you do a little bit more of like the managerial stuff. Yeah, like I'd say you, I'm, you're pretty much sales and operations. Yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah. I'd say I'm maybe thirty percent working with my tools. You know, like this morning. Met the guys at a job, helped them finish demo in a the bathroom. Um, then left there, went and got tile samples, and met and go what met with the tile guy to get him scheduled. And tomorrow, going to check with the customer, make sure the tile's right. Um, so yeah, more more operations, more high level stuff than kind of um, right. in the in the weeds, so to say. Um, just because you know Kyle and I make a good balance in that. He'd rather not not deal with the money, not deal with the customers. You know, he'll deal with the customers when he's in the house, but he doesn't want to go look at the jobs and stuff like that. and Try to sell it. Yeah. You know me. Uh, I, I can talk. So uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's my strong suit. That's good, man. I mean, it's important, you know, um, which I learned early in the game. Like, I'm much better. I'm more beneficial to my company if I'm in front of customers and talking to them and trying to coordinate that way than I am actually on a machine or, using hand tool. Like, I can do that type of shit, but I have guys that are better at it than I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like, yeah, well, you do what you're good at, I'm going to do what I'm good at. Yeah. That's how we work together. You yep. know? Um, so that's, that's good that you're figuring that out already. Because yeah. it, it makes it hard, man. You get burnt out when you try to do it all yourself. Yeah, there's just, you know, I tried that, you know, back when I was working, when it was my, my part-time gig. But uh, like you said, it's too much. And, and then you realize, too, like you said, somebody's way more efficient at it than me. So, like, dollar per hour-wise, it yep. am I efficient enough in a, in a skid steer to make us enough money, or is that guy that makes, 
maybe fifteen dollars less an hour than me better, so the dollars are better spent. Correct. Um, you know, and like you said, if if we can't go sell the work ahead of time, that guy's done that job, and then he has nowhere else to go. Right. So yep. you got to balance. You know, where's your time better spent, um, and how is how's your time most efficient? Right. Um, which you know, luckily I figured out pretty quick. But uh, like you know, like any startup, it's you know figuring it out every day. You got some days you do well, and some days you don't do well, and um, yep. just try to make it every day. Yeah, man. No, it's a it's a challenge every day, man. And you know, talking to other mentors or other business owners, I think it it always will be. Yeah, you but know, I, I think that's the draw for people like you and I. You know, if something if something was really easy, would would we want to do it? Like, would you wake up every day and say, you know, I'm ready to put my boots on and hit the ground running, or would you just be like how I was before, just every morning driving down Suitland Parkway, just kind of get in a routine? You know, yeah, you yeah. just you kind of become numb to it, you know, and it's like, you know, people talk about all the time, you know, when you're, you know, young kid, teenager, and, you know, going to sleep at night and your legs hurt from growing pains. Well, if you're not feeling pain, you're not growing. So, right. oh, yeah. you know, it, it, I always want to keep growing. I want to be better than I was yesterday, and that's my drive. And So what's your goal with Crownstone? You want to become a large company or you want to keep it small and do what you can? I mean, what's the – I'd, the five I'd say year, five year plan, ten year plan. I'd say right now our focus is, uh, you know, a lot of what we encounter in someone's house is a lack of maintenance on things. A lot of people just don't know stuff that needs to be done with their house. Um, so that's you know, underneath our our name it says design, build, maintain, and you see a lot of contractors that say design, build. Well, I'm pushing the maintenance part of it, like. You can design and build the nicest thing you want, but if you don't take care of it, it's not going to be worth anything in a few years from now. Just like your truck. You can have the nicest truck on the road, but if you don't wash it, you don't change the oil, all that stuff, it's not going to be worth anything. Um, so really pushing the maintenance aspect, and uh, the maintenance aspect helps us build trust uh, with the customer. And my goal is that you know, you're building your new house, for example. I want to build that trust with you that once that house is done – you're like, look, Chris and his guys got it, and I'm the only person you call for anything in your house. Granted, if there's a tree, you're not going to call me. You're going to just show up there yourself. But, um, you know, right now, if you had to get maintenance stuff done in your house, you're going to call an AC guy. You're going to call an electrician to change GFIs out. You're going to call somebody to come put up your Christmas lights. You're going to call somebody to clean your gutters, you know, all this kind of stuff. If I can just be that one person that you call that I've built that trust with, then I'm good to go. So my, my goal, I would say, that's realistic is probably to be in the top five guys in the county that people think of when they think of home remodeling. Um, right now, I'd say I'm probably the bottom five just because people don't know about it. But um, I, I think we probably want to stay no more than, like, 20 guys just because I, I want to keep the personal touch on things. I want to stay involved. Right. Um, but I know at some point that that might pass me up, and I might have to change my focus. So um, yeah, just uh, just trying to figure it out. But that would be my biggest goal: is that you know when somebody thinks home remodeling, home maintenance, they they think of us um, rather than you know anybody else. Right. No, I mean I think that's a good goal because I think the maintenance part of it is a lot of repeat business. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So like you're getting the same customer to call you and come back. You know whether it's multiple times a year or, you know, just through over the course of years, you, you get re repeat business out of them. So that's a cool way to approach it. Yeah, um, we're actually starting um, home maintenance packages. So it'll be a, like a monthly service fee that you pay. And for each, you know, level of the package, you get certain things done in your house and you get X number of, you know, handyman hours to, you know, if your wife wants to hang the TV on the wall or something like that, right? Those are things we'll do while we're there, and that's already built in your monthly fee. Um, <clears throat> again, just to keep repeat business. That's a pretty cool approach, too, man. Yeah, yeah, and um, I don't know what the price tag on something like that is, but it <laughs> almost seems like it'd be a fucking really cool Christmas gift for like your mom or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's <laughs> a, <laughs> no, that's a good. I didn't thought about that either, right? but yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, maybe I'll have to uh, bring you in on the marketing department. Yeah, man. Um, but. Yeah, it started out, you know, I just started thinking about all these monthly subscriptions. Everybody, everybody's got Netflix. Everybody's got Amazon Prime. Right. 
everybody's got Sirius XM. You know, the, the quantity of people out there that have all this stuff is huge. Um, and for us, it's a way that, you know, I'm supposed to come do Gene's Kitchen and you call me, hey, man, you know, the, the daughter's sick. Like, you can't come here for the next few days. Well, now I got three, four days that two or three guys were going to go there and put a kitchen in that now they have no work. Right, well, right. I got these maintenance packages that are sitting on the back burner. I can call somebody else and say, hey, we're supposed to come clean your gutters next week. I had a, a gap come up. Can we come today? Most people, you know, something like that, they don't care. So for us, it was a way to kind of fill in the gaps between bigger jobs that, you know, we're keeping the guys busy. We're getting the name out there. We're building that trust with you, but we're also taking care of your house. And yeah. like I said, the maintenance stuff goes a long way. I mean, you probably the biggest thing we've been doing the last three months is Jeez. replacing front doors, back doors, side doors, just because people haven't painted them. People haven't kept leaves away from them, water away from them. Right. You know, simple stuff like that where – you know, you could have done it yourself, but now you're paying me, you know, two grand to come put a new door in for you. Um, so that's kind of how the maintenance packages came to be. Do you have a number on that yet? Uh, we're finalizing them, and they're going to be on our website hopefully by the end of the month. Okay. Um, and then I feel like that's a hard fucking thing to put a number on, man. Yeah, so. Because, like, a lot of it, like, with the man hours going out, like the handyman man hours for, like, the year. Yeah. Like, people call you out to do, like, a. A half hour task. Yeah, it's like you're driving all the way there, doing it, and then leaving. It's like, like I feel like you got to almost set it up to where there's like a minimum um, for each time you go out there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so the way I broke it out is, you know, there's you know, call it 15, 20 items that we're gonna check out. You know, why we're there, plus 30 minutes, plus half hour, plus two hours of handyman time. Why we're there? Right. Um. But you're right. I mean, you know, like some of it's gonna vary too, and it, it's mm-hmm. hard to put. You know, I can put, like, a starting price, but, you know, if you have a 1,500-square-foot house or you have a 5,000-square-foot house, it's going to be different. So yeah. what we're doing is, like, once you sign up for it, there's an initial assessment. Where we'll come out and walk your house with you, and that will have a fee just for the assessment. So we'll kind of update you on, hey, here's the health of your home, and then here's the stuff we're going to maintain, and then I can finalize that price with you. Um, so and I feel like that puts you in a spot, too, where – like other items that come up, like, uh, you know, every, you know, you might, somebody might sign that, then 10 years later, you, they've been having that service done by you, but now they need a new roof. So mm-hmm. guess what? They're going to use Chris to, to do the roof work. Yeah. So there'll be bigger projects that come out of it, I feel like. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, you know, we've been tracking your home for the last X number of years, too. We know everything that's going on with it. You know, you could call me 15 years from now and say, hey, man, I bought a bigger farm. You know, I'm going to sell this house. But, I don't have any of the records of when you do, when you did all this stuff. So right. I can come to you and say, all right, Gene, here's your whole folder that I got from my box site that I have everything saved on. This is everything I've done to your house. This is all the receipts, this is the materials, everything we used. And now everybody, ha- you know, has their house records. Um, you know, like kind of like a Carfax for your truck, you know, right. same kind of thing for your house. No, man, that's cool. I mean, I think it's a great idea to kind of stand apart from other people. I mean, is there anybody else in the area doing that? Not that I found. Um, there's a couple other guys in the state that I've seen. They've had something similar. Right. But no one in Southern Maryland that, I, that I've that i found. Um, I'm yeah. sure after your famous podcast here, a lot of people are going to steal my idea. I but know, man. Hey. Put it out there for them now, <laughs> bud. That's uh, all right. Um, I've been working on it for a little while, so it'll probably take them some time to catch up. That's cool, man. No, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and I say that because it's a service that I may be interested in, you know, just as yeah. a busy dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not going to bullshit. I work. You know, six days a week, and now this time of year, it's dark when I leave. It's dark when I get home. Yeah. So it's like, you know, <laughs> not have to worry about that type of stuff at home would be cool. You know. Yeah, I mean, you're not um, gonna pull pull one of your guys. Off. I mean, you could clean your gutters probably twice as fast as me because you got two boom trucks out there that you could do it in ten minutes. But you're not gonna stop them from doing what no, they're doing. No, it's, you it's know, not making money. Yeah, even right. even the snow plows and stuff like that. You were out snow plowing another day for. You know, three days straight, and you came home. Your driveway still had snow on it. Right, know? exactly. So right. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you don't have to yep. worry about it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, are you going to stick with the residential work, or are you going to do try to get into the commercial shit as well? I mean, uh, I'd like to do. I'd like to get into like light commercial. I don't. I don't think I want to do ground up buildings just because that ties up so much time and so much money. Um, and there's a lot more competition there. But right. I think smaller commercial, like uh, office fit-outs and stuff, uh, there's there's one office renovation that we're 
opened a bid uh, down in North Beach uh, <clears throat> sometime early this year. Uh, we've been talking to them for a few weeks now before the holidays, um, an investment banker down in the beach. So hoping that works out. Um, a lot of – all that happened, just word of mouth. Um, yeah, word of mouth has been great advertising for us. I mean, we've recently yeah. started the, the Facebook, Instagram – Thing trying to trying to keep up with uh, some other guys in the county like yourself, but uh, yeah, it's uh no, nah, dude. I think it's um it's important. I mean, I I do think that as the longer you're in business, uh, you don't have to market yourself as hard because of the word of mouth thing. But I mean, you can't slack on it though, especially yeah. as a young business like up and coming, dude. Like you have got to put your shit out there, let people see that, that you exist. You know, even. <laughs> they don't know that you're out there doing the work. They're not going to call you for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I think you got the right idea on that. I mean, we're still new enough. We even haven't even had time to get the trucks lettered yet. So we don't even have a, a sign on the road. You know, we don't we don't have anything. Right. Um, we have business yep. cards and you know word of mouth. And honestly, you know the the social media stuff, you know, didn't really hit until a few weeks ago. Uh, <clears throat> we had a customer that needed something done pretty quick and. She texted me after it was done and said, hey, your guys did a great job. Thanks for getting it done for us. Where can I leave a review? Never even crossed my mind of where can I leave it. And I'm like, shit, I better go figure something out. Mm -hmm. So I sent her our Facebook page, and she's like, okay, what about your Yelp? And I'm like, guess I need to get a Yelp. So I just got a Yelp the other day and, yep. you know, working on all that. But, um, you know, I think – and I know you talk about it a lot, the social media stuff, and I think – you know, our generation gets it. We realize that it's something we need to do. And like you were saying last week, it's the one of the last things you think about because you're driving on the road and you're thinking about bills you got to pay and where are the guys doing tomorrow? Do they have the stuff to do it? You're not like, oh, I need to do an Instagram post. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> usually I think about it at 10 o'clock at night when I'm laying in bed. But uh, It's hard, man. I mean, because we're so busy <laughs> with other stuff. And then, like, I'm not huge on social media. And it's just – but it's – it's something that has to cross your mind. Like, for me, I almost got to, like, put it on my fucking to-do list. Yeah. Like, hey, Instagram post, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. That I got to try to do at least two or three a week, you know, where you get people that are more into it. You know, that might be all they want to do, but I, I don't know, man. I haven't really dialed no, I mean, it in yet. I just know it's important to be on it. Yeah. Um, and try to make it as consistent as possible. Yeah, I'm um, at the point now where I try to do one a week. Um can't say I've always done that, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. And I think uh, a lot of our generation is looking for, like, that validation of, like, oh, somebody else likes Chris. Somebody else likes right. Gene's work. Somebody else said Gene. Well, it's dude, not, that's where people find you. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. That's yeah. where people go to, hey, who uh, who can replace my front door? Yep. They're going to ask groups on Facebook. Yeah. And then, you know, and then I even, you know, when I first started, I, I had an issue trying to get my company Facebook page being able to be linked. Mm -hmm. So I would have buddies, hey, I'm trying to tag you in this post, but I can't link your company page. And I'm like, well, shit, man. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, so you spent a couple hours trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, no, I had the same thing because, you know, I started the website and crownstone.com was already taken. So I got crownstone.us. So I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, American, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, <clears throat> but when I made the Instagram, it was crownstone underscore us and then i made the facebook and it was just crownstone because there wasn't another one and then facebook and instagram were like whoa 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 these two pages can't talk to each other they're different people dude i was on the phone for like an hour and a half with facebook and they, they were good people but they were just like dude you're two different people you can't do that and i'm like no they're all me like they're, they're all whatever crownstones are out there they're me and right. luckily we got it all squared away but um, <clears throat> yeah, dude, I mean, you know, most of the kitchens, bathrooms, everything I go look at, I'd say there's 10% of the customers that are, you know, have no idea what they want. The other 90% are, here's my, my Pinterest, here's my Instagram, here's all the Facebook, here's all my screenshots, I'm going to share them to you, like, I want it to look just like that. And... Yep. Well, I, dude, women, crazy with that shit. Dude, insane. Instagram, so I'm building a house right now. And we're we're getting to the point with like where we're doing the interior finishes and stuff, and my wife's <laughs> dealing with the builder a lot on like the cabinets and flooring, and light fixtures, and paint, and I'm just like, dude, yeah, she wants tile, white, white shaker cabinets like everybody else, and <laughs> it's crazy, man. 
And it's all pictures. Yeah. And, you know, like we even, we met with this Amish dude who's building our cabinets. And we're sitting there, you know, the Amish dude sitting there with a graph paper and a pen. <laughs> and we're, we're showing him uh, fucking Instagram and Pinterest pictures. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the first time you ever seen it. Nah, fuck that, man. He, <laughs> he sees that shit just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I mean, that is what it is, man. And people, they get expectations from stuff like that. I mean, for us, it, it's pretty helpful, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it lets you know exactly what they're expecting. Yeah. You know? Manage yeah. expectations. That's that's what I try to do. And, you know, uh, your customers are going to expect something. So if you can give me an idea what you're expecting, that helps me right. meet those expectations. Um, you know, the 10% that I come across that are like, I just need a new bathroom, man. I don't know what I want it to look like. It's like, damn, like, I got to think about this. <laughs> right. You know, and it's like you're going through your phone. And you're like, how about this one? You like this one? No, don't like that one. You're flipping through all the jobs you've already done. And you're like, okay, maybe they'll bite on something just because I have no idea. You know, like design isn't my thing. And, right. you know, luckily one of our guys, he just graduated with his architecture degree. So he's doing a lot of design and yep. rendering stuff. Um, but, you know, for me, it's Which like, I think that's a huge part of it, man. Um yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's a that's a service that people would pay for just designing the shit. Yeah, you know, like if you said, "Hey, man, we'll design this whole kitchen for you, but it's going to cost like a thousand bucks." Yeah, but we're going to get it all to scale and we're going to figure it out. Most people are like, okay, yeah, because before I spend fifty grand on a kitchen, I want to see what it's going to look like. You yeah, know, I'll, I'll spend the extra grand. You know. Yeah. So. No, I mean, we we had something as simple as people want to add a French door inside their house to make it an office because they're working from home now. And they were like, they didn't know if they wanted the transom, the windows above the door or not. And they were like, can you do a rendering of it? And I'm sitting there, I'm like trying to draw it on graph paper and everything. And I'm like, looks good to me. Like, right. you know, I could show it to you and you'd probably be like, nah, yeah, I get what's going on. I gave it to our guy that, you know, just finished architecture school. Dude, no joke. 30 minutes later, he sends me a picture, took a picture from their Zillow listing when they bought the house, drew the doors on there and showed them two ways like, you could see through the glass windows, everything. And I'm like, dude, that's the ticket. You know, That and dude <clears throat> shouldn't be doing anything else. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you need to put him just doing design. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're trying to show him the carpentry side of it so he gets how stuff goes together. And then, you know, in a little while, we'll kind of have, you know, the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. He'll be able to draw something we can actually build uh, rather than just go draw something pretty. So he's, right. a, he's a good dude for us to have. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, man, good people, man. That's a good thing. Like, it's a very important thing too. Um, hire the best people you can. That's what everybody yeah. tells me. Every mentor I've had in the business is say, you know, hire the best guy you can. It'll pay off. Yeah. And I think I think we both have done that and continue to do that. But uh, yeah, and just realizing what your strong suits are. You know, it's hard too though because when you're so young, not only a young dude but like a young company, it's hard to attract good talent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because people, because they're taking a chance on you just as much as you are on them. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? So it's almost you got to like sell yourself to this established dude to be like, hey man, come work with me, and you know, this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Maybe we'll be there in a couple years or whatever. But sometimes you got to sell people on the vision. You know. And right. It, like you know, I worked at Under Armour. You know, Kevin Plank that started Under Armour. He sold a lot of people on the vision, and you know that company took off, and you know he did really well, and. I think that's the only thing you can do when you're young is, you know, hey, this is where I'm going to be. You know, I got the fire to do it. I just need your help right. being that fire with me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but like you've talked about before on the podcast, you know, it's hard to find young guys that want to work. You know, it's – Well, especially in our industry, dude. Yeah. I mean, or any industry where you work with your hands or got to be outside or whatever. Um, I saw Chick-fil-A the other day is hiring people at $17 an hour. Would you come dig ditches for me for 15 you know, it's it's tough. It's tough, dude. Yeah. I know. So what what are other challenges in the industry right now besides, like, finding good help and um, all that? I guess there's <laughs> challenges for you just being so young and into it. I mean, what, there, do, what do, like, I guess, what are you seeing being the hardest part of your, your day-to-day now? Um, re recently is, you know, the uh, I've gotten more involved in the legal tax side of things just to try to do that right and <clears> – <throat> It's kind of like, you know, you know, they talk about people going on, you know, WebMD and self-diagnosing yourself like, oh, I got a cough, oh, I got, you know, I, I'm going right. to die. You know, like you get, 
you start Googling enough stuff about business, you're going to do the same thing to yourself. Oh, yeah. You're going to, like, you know, you Google, how do I start a business? And then you're like, okay, I got to do these 15 things. That's what the, you know. And you start trying to do all those things, and then you get down the path on a lot of them, and you're like, dude, I don't even need to do that. Or I'm doing it wrong. And, you know, I found that, again, you know, managing what you're good at is is all you need to do. You know, like payroll. I'm not going to do payroll. My accountant, she does my payroll just because I know it's going to be right. And, again, my time isn't worth it. Um, so I've spent a lot of time setting that stuff up and trying to understand all that stuff and trying to understand taxes and all that is – it's a nightmare to try to understand all of that and mm-hmm. how to do your taxes and the business taxes and everything like that. Um, but I got a good accountant and, you know, a good lawyer helped me out with all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> that – that's the biggest thing I think is again finding the right people. Um, but you know the lead times on stuff like you talked about before building your house. You know the appliances, cabinets, stuff like that. You know we had a job a few months ago. They said twenty six weeks to get kitchen cabinets, and it's like, you know, <laughs> hard sell there, man. I, I got to come to you and say, Gene, pay for these cabinets. I'll be back in six months to put them in. Cool with that, you know? And it's like, dude, every night I'm going to sleep and I'm like, I spent that man's money and. You know, I'll be back in six months. That's tough. Yeah. It's, and especially the world we live in now, Amazon, you know, it'll be here tomorrow. People expect stuff now, you know, like the the kitchen's designed, the cabinets are coming tomorrow, right? You know, and it's like, then it doesn't even take into account, you know, when our cabinet guy gets them, he opens all the boxes and makes sure there's no damages. If there's damages, I got to get replacements. So if I tell you, Gene, I'm going to be there in 26 weeks, dude, 26 weeks in one day, your wife's calling me, hey, Chris, you're coming tomorrow, right? You're coming tomorrow. And it's like, Whoa, 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 like, they just came in, you know, and it, trying to trying to manage all that stuff, um, again, it's just the expectations of telling people what's going on. Right. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I mean, starting up your business is, uh, dollars-wise, that's probably the biggest thing I think about right now. That's probably what stresses me the most is. Yeah, dude, I mean, well, I think that's, that's all small business owners, man. It's just mo- cash flow. Yeah. Money, you know. Well, and I think the volume of the, the stress just changes, too. You know, right now I'm worried about how can I pay myself, you know, $1,100 a week just for me to live off of. You're worried about paying 15 dudes $1,100 a week. You know, like, your problems are bigger than mine, you know, and they're just, they're different. I guess they just. It's just, it's just all relative, man. It's yeah. just bigger numbers. But, I mean, it, it never goes away, though, I feel like. You know, like, you're never just going to be comfortable with it. No, I think it's, uh, it's a constant, you know, a constant struggle that I think you're going to put up with forever. And honestly, man, I think that's why some people that have the aspiration to go into business but decide not to is because they just they don't have the the personality for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just it's not for everybody, dude. Definitely not. I mean, you could say, you know, you could talk a good game, say you want to do it and all this shit, but then when it comes time to actually start writing fucking checks, you're like, oh man, yeah, like, you know, like. <laughs> No, dude, there's times where I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, dude, am I going to have to cash in my 401k or am I going to have to do all this, you know, put it on the credit card just to get through the next couple months, you know, and, you, you know, everything you've been taught in, in finances, like up till now of like, you know, pay off your credit card every month, all that kind of stuff. Dude, there's some times where you're starting up a business like I am and it's like, dude, I'm not going to be able to pay the whole credit card this month. I'm out all this stuff, like, you know. I just need to use the credit card to float me for a month, you know, right. and, and that happens and it's scary. And, you know, I think a lot of people are like, dude, I can't do that, you know, and it's just, it's comfortable to stay at your day oh, yeah. job. But, um, you know, I, it was one of those things where, you know, do I want my obituary to say, okay, he worked for the same company for 40 years and, you know, he died as a vice president. Cool. You know, but I, that's not what I want. And I don't want my obituary to say now, oh yeah, he owned Crownstone. I don't want that to be, my life is, is work, but, right. um, you know, working for myself now, it, it allows you the time. It allows you the flexibility. You know, if, you know, you, for example, if you had to leave work and go to one of your kids' soccer games, you could. You know, something might fall for it, but that's a choice you can make. Somebody isn't saying, Gene, you got to be at work. You know, it it just gives you that flexibility. It gives you the power to kind of um, – do what you want, and yeah. it's a uh, no. You can do that type of stuff, but it's always um, there's a consequence for it. Absolutely, you know, but that's a consequence that you just, you got to put on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, 
that's a risk you can take, you know. Correct. And, yeah. Right. You know, you got to check and make sure your boss is good with it. Well, your your boss is you, you know. Right. And twenty years from now, you know, when you, your daughter's going to college, are you going to be happy you made those those right decisions? There's probably going to be some you do differently, but you know, it's better than someone sitting there, dude. You have to be at work. Well, yep. you know, it's. I don't know. It, it's nice to have the option, and I like the pride of it too. You know, like I, you know, the back to the social media stuff. I watched, you know, my Facebook page and watch how much it's grown. And you know, I started the Facebook page. I don't know, maybe two months ago. I got like 146 people I checked on the way up here that follow my page now. Like that's pretty good, you know. And yeah. then then you look at the ads and how many people saw it over the last two weeks and stuff like that, and you're like cool like i'm i'm doing it people are seeing something you know yeah. and um is um the uh the facebook ads are you spending money on the marketing like that like uh i spent like 30 40 bucks so far nothing crazy right. um you know like i i think the biggest one i did was uh, we do snow removal for for some of our clients um and i was trying to get that out early um uh, to get some contracts in place so it wasn't like hysteria like it was last week mm -hmm. um that didn't really work out but <laughs> i did spend 20 bucks for like six days or something to put it out there so people would you know try to get something under contract but when it's 65 degrees it's hard to sell snow removal yep. um but last week when there was 15 and a half inches sitting in my driveway it was pretty easy to sell it then but yeah. uh yeah that didn't really help me too much right but <laughs> yeah so that's kind of where i found myself man i'm i'm more so making decisions like that you know how much do you spend on certain ads and then what demographics do you target? What zip codes do you target? You know, obviously like this time of year is a slow time of year. So do you spend more money on marketing or do you save some of that money? As, you know, so it's, it's just a constant. I think it's a trial and error kind of thing. Yeah. Like yep. kind of see what works. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, I don't know what demographic is, is it right now? I mean, my demographics are going anywhere from a, 78 year old woman that wants to you know get her house somewhat updated so she can sell it and move to florida to somebody at, like you and i that's 30 something years old just got their first house and you know well, their I wife's been pinterest. downloading pinterest and we got to make it look like pinterest so um yep i don't know if i have a demographic yet so it's kind of hard to hard to figure well, that out i would say any homeowner man <laughs> pretty much you know yeah i mean there was a I, I, another thing that that we did to try to you know, broaden our, our attack here. Um, I, I'm a certified aging in place specialist. I think I'm the only one in Southern Maryland. Um, so like you, for example, you just built your house. Like you like, you obviously like the land. You like that house. You, you might want to stay in that house till you die. The house you built right now isn't the house that it, you're going to, what it's going to look like when you die. You know, like at some point, God forbid, you're going to be in a walker or a wheelchair or something like that. You know, how do you get throughout your house, like, as you grow and, in, in, like, your health. And um, that's kind of a big thing, too. And, you know, I, th I thought about it just because the amount of elderly people that, you know, exist, but also um, all the veterans, too. We have a lot of service veterans that are, you know, disabled in some way that may or may not have a house that they can live in and right. try to help some of those people. Um, <clears throat> but in that class, they were talking about, 70% of the houses in the United States were built before 1970. Like, when you think about that, dude, that's a big number of houses, you know, and like, I know you grew yep. up in Calvert, I grew up in Calvert, and there's been a lot of houses built. Some houses are 50 years old now. Yeah. Or older. Yeah, I mean, this house we're in now, what is it, 100 and something years old? Yeah, it's an old house, dude. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, we we see all the guys like, you know, Merrick and Quality built and all that. Dude, they built a ton of houses. Dude, that's like the tiniest piece of the amount of houses here. They're just the ones up close to the road that we see, you know, right. like you go back in old Huntingtown or down St. Leonard by you, like dude, there's a lot of old houses back there. And, you know, there's a lot of old people that live in those old houses. And back then they weren't building houses for people to get old in, you know, right. the, yeah. the master bedroom bath are upstairs, you know, tell 80 old, 80 year old woman walk up two flights of stairs to go to bed. Probably ain't going to happen. Right. Um, yep. So yeah, you're right. I mean, my demographic is people that are houses and, people that own houses that need work and they, all houses need work, whether it's the yeah. maintenance or we're updating. hundred so. percent, man. No, I think it's a good business plan, dude. Um, Just trying to figure it out, man. <clears throat> yeah. And you know, I've, I've found too, I think a lot of people, I'm 32. You said you're 33. Yep. I think a lot of people like to deal with young, ambitious people. 
You know what I'm saying? That way, because like even builders, man, you get like these older guys, 60s and 70s who've been doing the shit for 50 years, but they don't have any enthusiasm anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're worn they're out. over it. They're worn <laughs> out. So like you know, the, and you can see it in their personality. Like so, like I found that people do like to deal with younger, ambitious guys. You know that are going to answer the phone, who are going to come back, who are going to do the quality control checks. And um, I think that goes a long way, too. You yeah, know? I agree. And, you know, I think, I think you know, a lot of those older guys, one, you know, the permit offices and everything, I've warned them out over the years that it's not fun anymore. For us, it's still fun uh, most of the time. Right. But I think, uh, <clears throat> I think that we understand the communication part of it. And those guys, yeah. you know, didn't have cell phones. You know, at most they had, like, the, the phone in a bag and the, the hump on the floor in the truck, you know, and it was like, I'll call you when I get service kind of thing. Whereas now it's like, you have to answer the phone. You Such have a to. double-edged sword, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, so we, were, we touched on it briefly earlier, but like <laughs> on a Monday morning, over the weekend I'll have missed calls, voicemails, text messages, Facebook messages, Facebook comments on ads, Facebook comments on posts, Instagram messages, Instagram comments on the post. And it's like, holy shit, man. Like, I got to reach back out to all these people. Oh, and then website inquiries. You know, people go directly to the website. And that's like, uh, you have to go through it and just make your list and, like, you know, try to get back to people. And then I try to consolidate it all on just the one platform of my phone. But it's like, dude, you know, like <laughs> – It's a good problem to have, but it's a hell of a problem. Yeah, and, like, you're not going to convince a 55-year-old contractor to do that. No. He's not going to message you back on Instagram because you said something. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not going to Probably won't know how to. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, and uh, if you think the podcast hasn't done anything, it's it's taught me not to make my cell phone number the the company phone number. So, appreciate you for that. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. (laughs) I know you're still feeling that. but Yeah, um, man. Well, like you said, all I can do is – ignore it on a Sunday, and then just try to catch up on Monday morning. I mean, that's all you can do. Well, you're underwater by then. you got a snorkel on hoping you can get right. back out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a good problem, but it is a problem. But And, you know, people expect those responses, too. You know, you right. can't wait three, four days to get back to them. You know, and um, the longer your customer waits, the more they think about things and the more thoughts they put in their own head of, like, you know, Gene's not going to respond or, you know, he, maybe he's not the right guy, all this kind of stuff. And they've been thinking about it for three days and then you respond, but they've already written you off, you know? So you have to get back to them and say, Hey, you know, I'll get back to you in three, four days. A lot of people that's good enough. Like you right. tell them that. And some people it's like, no, I need an answer now. And I've kind of found if those, if those are the kind of people you may or may not want to work with, you know, right. like I've been fortunate enough. And I think you are the area we're in. You don't have to take every job. And, I always trust my gut. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. So there's been a couple of jobs that, you know, people blow me up every hour. Hey, man, you said you are going to have this by 3 o'clock. It's 3.05. You know, it's like, dude, like, you know, just work <laughs> with me a little bit. Um, yep. But, you know, you, you realize, okay, I can't make this guy happy with getting a quote to him in time. I'm definitely not going to make him happy getting a job done in time. Like, yep. he's going to be calling me back for warranty stuff. You know, it, it just, you, you got to trust your gut with that kind of stuff. And I think if you respond to somebody and tell them something, it's enough. Right. Um, and, you know, you just get overwhelmed too, man. Like, there's too much going on. So, like, there's going to be times where you drop the ball. Yeah. And it's just going to happen. Yeah. You know, like, on a, if I get a, a Saturday night voicemail and then I don't respond to that till like, Wednesday the following week, it's like, look, you know, sorry, dude, it is what it is, man. I've been busy since Monday morning, you yep. know. And then at some point, you got to go home and turn it off. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's another thing. Like, because it's, because my wife, she works here with me. And, you know, you got to. You're a better man than me. I couldn't. You got to turn it <laughs> off, man. Like, you can't talk about it all the time, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, my girlfriend and I have the rule I can't take any work calls after seven o'clock. You know, if somebody calls me I, after seven, I won't, I won't take it. Um, I might respond to a text here and there, but, you know, if somebody calls me, sorry, you know, I'll, I'll get to it tomorrow. And, right. You know, I, I grew up in a life. My, my dad owned Total Comfort and Heating and Air Conditioning. was right down the street from me here behind Stevenson Pools. And, you know, I grew up, in the, and we didn't even have cell phones then. But I remember the house phone would ring for service calls and all that kind of stuff. And I'd go out with my dad on a Saturday morning. And, you know, when you're a little kid going to your dad in the work truck, it's it's cool. 
you know, to a point. And then now where I'm at the point where it's like, okay, I'm going to start a family soon, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't want to do that. You know, right. it's, it's not worth it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah it's, it's tough to balance everything, man. And, you know, you've been doing it a lot longer than I have. I'm just getting started in it. But, you know, and it's, it's hard not to be like, well, I can go get this done on Saturday and then I can get paid and then I got money for the next week. And it's hard yeah. to not think about that stuff. But sometimes you just you got to let it go. Um, yeah. I think it's always going to be an issue, man. <laughs> I don't think it goes away. Like, I've been trying my hardest to get that shit to stop. But – because then, you know, like, you go to the slow time of year and you have, like, weekly and monthly quotas. Like, I, I know what I got to do every week to pay the bills. So, it's like, well, shit, man. Well, we it rained on Wednesday and only working four days this week. We came up short. So, guess what? We got to work Saturday, dude. You know, I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah. And then on that rainy day on a Wednesday, it's not like I'm at home. I'm still up here doing stuff. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. It's – um. It's I guess tough. you just got to have supportive people at home, you know, yeah. and, you know, I know, I know my girlfriend will, you know, keep the house right and kind of take care yep. of the laundry, take care of the groceries, all that kind of stuff. And you just got to have people that understand, Yeah, you know, but no, I've been fortunate, man. I mean, my wife's definitely re- very cool about it. She, she gets it. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, and, and we're, we're doing all this, you know, to make something for our families. We're not doing it just, you know. Right. Yeah, it's cool to see a McKenzie contracting truck go down the road, and you're like, "Yeah, that's my name, that's my truck." But it, you're not doing it for all the glory. You're doing it so you can put food on the table and put a nice roof over the house for your family. You know, that's right. that's why you're doing it. So yeah, man. for that, just them knowing that that's the why. You know, right. people want to know why. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So um, we've gone way over an hour, haven't we? No, nah, we're at fifty. 51 minutes. Oh, wow. We're good. Yeah. I'm impressed. Uh, you have anything else you want to touch on? Um, Any questions for me? I would say, what, what do you think your biggest challenge is versus my challenges, or is it just the quantity and dollar value of the same challenges? I think my, my Because you've been doing this, what, four or five, six years now? Yeah, since 2015, I guess. Okay. Um. I don't know. I think for my industry, it's hard because the startup costs are so expensive, like equipment and trucks and shit like that. Like it's um, bigger money jobs, but it's also bigger money to get into the shit, you mm-hmm. know. So that's that's a hard startup thing. Is like you're not going to go out with twenty five grand and start a tree business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you yeah. got to have some shit. You got to have trucks and chipper trucks and big expensive chippers and stuff. Your insurance has got to be brutal, too. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it. I just think the initial startup costs um, and being able to get into it, which is, you know, a double-edged sword there, too, because you're also able to kind of weed out not competing against, like, weekend warrior type guys, you know, because yeah. do, there's there's certain shit you can't do unless you got the right stuff, you know. And I've gotten to the point now where I have all the right stuff to do the majority of the tree work. Um and the lighter excavating and hauling. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, because when you're doing, like, when you're messing around with, like, the a, like a pickup truck and a backpack blower and a, one little small chainsaw, I mean, you're you're literally getting priced against with, like, just dudes on a Saturday with a pickup truck. Yeah. You can't compete with that. Yeah. You know? So, that was my biggest initial challenge, and then getting away from that um, has been beneficial for me. Yeah, I mean, you and I talked, uh, you know, a couple times before I, I made the big leap. And, you know, I think you told me at, at one point there's <clears throat> 60% of the time you're still like, you know, I got it. And then 40% of the time you're like, my hair's on fire. You know, somebody take it all away. I mean, you think you think yeah. that's still about the same? or? I would say so, man. Yeah, it's um, it's tough. You know, like you said, like it's so up. It's like high highs and low lows, man. Yeah. Like, because when shit's all fucked up and broken and you can't finish jobs or people, customers aren't paying or you're chasing money and it's like, dude, like, you know, like you're constantly struggling to, like, make it all come together. But then there's times where it all comes together and everything's good and you're comfortable and you're like, okay, cool, man, this ain't too bad. I think that's, but, like, part of our problem is that we're never comfortable because, like, even, like, you were saying high highs and low lows, like, I think that's true because, like, we don't let there just be a middle. Like, if there's just... 
like I'm chilling, we're like something something's wrong. Something's I'm either wrong. not doing enough, right. <laughs> or like I'm about to find out something's really bad. Like right. you're just you're constantly fighting yourself, and you know yeah. you make the highs higher and you make the lows lower because you can't stay in that middle zone. If we stayed in that middle zone, you and I'd be getting a paycheck with somebody else's name on it. You know, yeah. not not our own. It's hard too, man. Like so, if everything's going good, right, and like around lunchtime, I haven't heard from anybody. Everything's pretty quiet. Guys are working. Everything's lined up for the next day. My wife will call me like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm at the office just catching up on stuff. And she'll be like, well, you going to get home early tonight? I'm like, maybe. I said, because this phone could ring, and my whole afternoon's going to go to shit yeah. like, really quickly. You know, like I never know. I can't commit to anything two hours from now because it could all turn around really quick. Really quick. Yep. So yeah, Mine does the same thing. What time are you going to be home today? I'm like, Open before five. That's about all I can tell you. You know, I don't right. – and where are you going today? Somewhere outside of this house. That's all I know. You know, it, it varies. Yeah. Because you get something that takes you off path, too. You never know where you're going to end up. But Yeah. <clears throat> no, I know, man. It's um, it's just a constant struggle. And I think I, – I, honestly, I don't think it ever stops. I think you just learn how to deal with it better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or it might be – like where you're, when you get more established, it might be where you're just more comfortable with the with all the bullshit. You know, like you're just you're just more comfortable not knowing what it's going to be like in two weeks or whatever. Because right now, dude, I try my best to get everything completely organized and lined up for the next two or three weeks. Yeah, it helps me sleep better at night. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, it's not going to get any more further planned. You know, you got to just hope that work keeps coming in. Yeah. So. I mean, I think people just kind of get better at living with that, you know. Um, as far as I can tell, or maybe they got it all figured out, and I don't. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think it's. I think. <laughs> I think it's always going to be a fight, and I think you know I'll always have marker boards on the wall with all the calendars on it of who's going where and yeah. what I need to do and jobs I need to call back and everything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think I'll get to the point where it's not I'm fighting for every check to get paid right away. You know, I got a little more cushion. Right now, it's like you said, dollars in, dollars out. You know, if I got a few grand at the end of the end of the month, that's extra. It's like, okay, cool, I'm in a good right. spot. Um, yep. But right now, it's just building that nest egg, and then, but like you said, once you get that nest egg, then it's like, oh, I need another truck, and then you go buy another truck, and then your nest egg's gone, and it's just, I don't know. I think you just keep going. But for me, it's better than sitting in somebody else's office somewhere, yeah. leaning my head against the wall, trying nah, to change man, something. Like I, I said, no dude, over. some people are built for it. Some people aren't. I mean, I, that's just my honest opinion on it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been built for it the last five years. It might put me in an early grave. I don't know. <laughs> if it gets to that point, hopefully I fucking, fit, fit, you know, change something. But Yeah, but, I mean, you know, it, I think you said before, you know, you, you're good with what you got. You know, you got you – got, Good family, you got a nice farm, you got right. a good truck. What more do you need? You know, and yeah, that's true. If that's what makes you happy, that's what makes you happy. And I, th- I think, I think the world we live in now with Instagram and all that kind of stuff, people are so worried about how they compare to everybody else. Right. And I think guys like you and I, like we, we don't really care. You know, and yeah, sometimes you know I'm driving down and I pass by your shop and I'm like, man, Gene's got a lot of cool stuff. You know, every 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 guy was a little boy at one point and had all the little toy little toys that you have now the big versions of so like right. you got a lot of cool stuff and like i'm like okay one day i'll be like that i'm not like oh i gotta go get that so i'm just like gene right. and <clears throat> everybody else is trying to compete against everybody else for their own happiness what makes you happy you yeah. know like you said you're happy with your house you're good what you know you've made it as far as you know from my as far side as, I'm, as far as i'm concerned yeah i'm successful you know what i'm saying um and I think when we were having that conversation, it was all about just, like, being content, too. Like, once you get to a certain point, it's like, you know, I, I look at these big, big dogs, or, you know, like the Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and shit, and it's like, once you get to a certain size or a certain dollar value, it's like, what keeps you motivated to keep doing more? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why? You can have everything. <laughs> you like, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, I would have everything I wanted if I had that. You know, like. Yeah. So, like, why just, why keep risking it and putting it all out there? Yeah. I don't know. But I think that just goes back to the certain personalities, man, where they wouldn't be content just sitting around doing a certain amount. They always just want to keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, you know. Yeah. But it's like Trump. You know, Trump did that. He didn't have to do the shit he did. 
but he wasn't happy. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't content with what he had going on, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Um, well, look, dude, I think we'll wrap it up at that. Yeah. I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, hopefully uh, maybe a couple more years we'll have this again, and I'll have better news about how we're doing and, yeah. you know, see what's going on. Yeah, no, it sounds like you're on the right track, dude. Keep doing the uh, – focus on, like, the quality of work and – marketing and all that and you'll you'll do well yeah i appreciate you know people like you being good mentors for me and trying to help me you know avoid as many speed bumps as i can but some of them i just got to hit my on my own oh but, yeah uh, for sure you've been uh you've been a good friend through all of it so i appreciate yeah, that man. yeah no problem yeah. um appreciate that and send me the uh website link and the facebook and we'll put it all in like the youtube uh comment section or like the content section yeah appreciate it all right brother all right man thank you see you